to everybody and welcome to this uh, webinar about the Mexican import process. Before, uh, before we begin, uh, we just want to make clear that all the material that we're going to be reviewing in the, in the presentation is just for informational purposes. In, in, it doesn't in any way uh, has, uh, can be considered as a legal advice. It's just, it's just in, it's informational. We are not an attorney or a law firm. During this, uh, the following minutes, we will be talking um, in, in about the main points that should be considered for the import process into Mexico, beginning for who can is the who can import into Mexico, what will be the importer register, what is the role of the customs broker in Mexico, what are the documentation that is required in order to be able to do in, to perform an importation. Uh, we were talking about, we will talk about commercial documents and also about customs documents. And we will talk briefly about some of the customs regimens as well as some of the tariffs and applicable duties for importations in Mexico. And what uh, and how the counterbalance and amping duties are applied as well uh, what are the requirements for the application of free trade agreements. And the, we will finish with um, uh, talking about non-tariff barriers and how the custom inspection is performed according to the Mexican customs law. Well, let's begin talking about who can legally import into Mexico. According to the Mexican, current Mexican custom law, in order to be able to uh, perform what is called commercial importation or, co or importation, if not uh, commercial, but that, that can be deducted from the, that can be considered as a IRS, as internal revenue tax um, deduction, uh, the person has to be what is called a reporter of record. A reporter of record is a person, or it can be a, a, an individual or an entity that is registered in the importer's registry of the Mexican Internal Revenue Service. This will be the registry with the, uh, Mexican Internal Revenue Service uh, will, ha will, will review and will be monitoring the fiscal situation of the, of the persons, of the, the individuals or the entities that are importing into Mexico in order to um, uh, be sure that all the, the legal and the tax regulations are complying. In order to enroll for the importer registered, the first, the first requirement is that the, either the individual or the entity they should have a valid tax I number in Mexico. So that's, that means that we're talking about entities. It will have to be an entity that has been legally established according to the Mexican laws in the country. And we're talking about individuals. Well, in order to have a valid tax ID number, it will, they will have to be Mexican citizens. In uh, the second requirement in order to apply for the register, is that they should also have an advanced electronic signature in force. The advanced electronic signature is the digital code or the digital signal that is assigned to every person that has a tax ID number. So at the time that an individual or entity is registered to obtain a tax ID number, at that time, once the tax ID number is issued, they also will, will receive the, the, their digital, digital signature and they will need that digital signature not only to apply for the registry, but also to perform every, 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 every entry, every import entry. Uh, they will also be required to, to submit a record of tax compliance. This meaning that they are current in all their tax obligation at the time that they are requiring the re re their re registration. But, um, the, in, there are there's a list of goods that are list, that are considered in Mexico as uh, goods that are sensible. In the case of those goods that they are listed in the Annex 10 of the General Foreign Trade Rules, the importer will require a second registry. So they, once they have uh, obtained the importer registry, they have to apply for the specific sector register. But they will not be able to obtain the second one if they haven't obtained the first one. 
and that these the, the persons that will be registering the specific sector register, they will be subject to the presentation of a special reports monthly or quarterly in order for the government to take control of the goods that they are importing and the use that has that is being done to, uh, that, that has been designed these goods. The the imports, uh, but there are also some exceptions. Some goods that can be imported or some importers that can do the importation without having to be in these registries, not in the general register or in the specific sector register. It is important to also note that because one of the requirements to apply for the general importers registered is to be current in the tax and all tax obligations. If for any reason there is a delay or a in any of the tax obligation, the, they can be taken out from the register and without further, further notice. So if they try to do any kind of operation, import operation, and, may, and they were behind in one of their tax obligation, they would, should, they would just not be able to do it. And uh, according to the law, the authority is not obligated to notify the importer that they're gonna be taken out of the register. So it's the obligation of the, of the importer that individual or the corporation to be current and all their task obligations in order to have to, to have their their register valid. And the same would apply with those uh, persons that are listed in the annex 10 of the you know, for trade rule who are registered in the specific sector registers. And this and in this sector besides having to comply with the regular tax obligations, they will also need to send reports quarterly or monthly about the operations that they are doing. But we're gonna find that uh, the law also established that there are a few situations in which there is no need to be registered in either of, of, of these registers and the importer can perform the importation without it. And most of these are considered not commercial importation and, com and also because there are special operations. So if the importer is a foreign diplomat or a consulate, they will be exempted of the register as well. Uh, is the individual importing the, the, the goods, uh, they are importing orthopedic devices, prosthesis, or any special vehicle, but it's gonna use by, by the importer. In that case, the importer, the register is not, is not necessary. Also in uh, any importation in bond, the registry is not necessary. When a passenger is, uh, 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 import is something that goes about the, what is uh, considered luggage, passengers luggage and international travel, they will not need to, to be in the register either. Also, this exception also applies for any agricultural commodities or supplies if the importer is the farmer that's going to utilize these, these commodities of these supplies. If we're talking there is caterpillar, for example, that is, um, that is important on agricultural equipment. In that case, they will have to be in the register because they're gonna resell the equipment. So if it's Juan Perez, the farmer, who's gonna use the, the equipment that once is doing the importation, he would not be required to be in the register. Also, in, in general terms, any personal any goods for personal use with a value that would not accept $5,000 can be imported and what is considered a non-commercial non -commercial importation and they would not be required to be in the registry. The same applies for medical equipment when the importer is who is gonna be using the medical equipment. Here we're talking about maybe a special, uh, kind of a special beds, uh, any special respirator or any other medical device that will be used for the same person that is performing the importation. Also, any importation done by the Mexican Army, the Fire Department, and, and the state and city governments will be exempted of the registry. As well, of some of the importations that are, that are done using a courier service with a value that would not exceed $1,000. In those cases, importer would not require to be registered either. Any kinds of books and art pieces, uh, the, the importer is not required to be in the, in the registry. The same is uh, when we're talking about household items, items belonging to some Mexican citizens that will return to the country after leaving 
ab abroad or, for or foreign citizens arriving to stay in the country under a student or a work visa, they can do the importation of the, their household items under what is considered a special importation, and they would not be uh, required to be in the registry either. Also, when we're talking about the film industry, all the material, all the equipment that could be imported uh, temporarily or for the uh, any special pro any particular project, they will be able to do it with no need to use a I am for a registry. Uh, the pharmaceutical products that are imported with prescription uh, in Las and and uh, according for the use of the importer, they also would not be required to be to be uh, in the register. It's uh, another point to to take in account regarding the import register. The import register is required for definitive and also for temporary importations. 